Hello, my name is Andrew Briggs, and today we are going to work on Piatti's Caprice number no. 2, the Andante Religioso. So, the challenge of this caprice is to create a legato flowing line throughout the whole caprice, which has a lot of different musical textures. So, what we're going to do today is become more aware of how the shoulder blade moves across the back, and if it moves smoothly, it will create a legato sense throughout the whole caprice. So before we start playing with the cello, let's put down our cellos, actually. And hold your arm, extend your arm straight out in front of you. And what I would like you to do is extend your arm forward and pull it back without bending any part of the arm. And also keeping your torso basically in position, uh, in a neutral position, and extending and contracting your arm and see where is your arm moving from and maybe even become more aware of how the shoulder blade is moving across the back as you extend and contract your arm. So go ahead and become more aware of this movement. And is there a part of this movement that is um, very smooth or are there parts of it that are not as smooth? and be, just become more aware of the not smooth parts and see if you can bring more smoothness to that part. Okay, let's take a rest. Um, this next section, we've now extended and contracted the arm. We're now going to hold the arm in front of us again and rotate it so that our palm is facing one side of the room. We're now gonna rotate it so it faces the other side of the room. So it's facing out and we rotate to face in. And we go between these two points and notice how the whole arm is engaged with this rotation. And, but you can be aware of different parts of the arm during the rotation too. So you can notice the fingers moving, you can notice the hand, the wrist, the forearm, the elbow, the sh uh, upper arm or the shoulder, and focus. you can focus on the elbow during this rotation and how does that change the quality of the rotation? Is it smooth the whole time or are there parts that are um, not as smooth? and then maybe focus on the upper arm. How does that change the sensation of this rotation? And then you can even think of the thumb while it's rotating, and does the awareness of the thumb moving change the quality of your rotation? So, let's take a break. Okay, so now we're gonna combine the ideas of rotation and extension uh, in different ways. So let's go ahead and extend the arm and rotate it so that the palm faces out and away from us. And then as we bring it back in, let's rotate it back so that the palm faces in. And just go between these two points and notice how is the shoulder blade moving now that we're adding in a rotation. And does it feel easier or harder than it was without the rotation? Okay, let's let that go. Let's now try the opposite version of this. So as we extend, we're going to rotate in, and as we pull back, we're gonna rotate out. And just go between these two, and feel how the shoulder blade is moving now. Is it smooth, or is it not so smooth, and is this easier or harder than the first version? Okay, so after you've done those two versions a few times, you know how it feels, make a choice. Which one was easier for you? And let's go ahead and bring it to the cello. So, the idea of extension is how we think of a down bow. So as we extend our arm, we create a down bow. And as we bring it back in, we create an up bow. So remember which version of the extension um, worked best with which rotation. So for me, the idea of rotating my palm out and my whole arm out was easier for the extension. So I'm going to go ahead and do a down bow where my palm is rotating out. And as I come back in, my whole arm rotates back in. And go ahead and become more aware of how the shoulder blade is moving across the back. And are there parts where the shoulder blade is not moving as smoothly as you aid 
this movement of the shoulder blade in another way by using the heels. So as I push in my right heel, I move to the left, and as I push in my left heel, I move to the right. And so we can move side to side using our heels. Now, um, we can move in the same direction as the bow, um, or we can move in the opposite direction as the bow. And so let's try both ways and see which one helps with our shoulder blades moving more legato. So I'm gonna start with my right heel moving me to the left on the down bows and the left heel moving me to the right on up bows. So this will be opposite direction. So. during this exercise become aware of how the shoulder blade is moving and if this is easier or not as easy. So let's now do the opposite or do the other way where I'm moving with the bow and let's see how that sounds. a different quality in the sound or um, sensation. I, I notice a different sensation while I'm playing with and against the bow. So let's try both of these out with the opening of the caprice and see which one fits, it, fits the opening better. So I'm going to move against the bow first. Let's take that same section, but now I'm going to move with the bow. Notice if there was different color sounds, um, which one sounded better for the opening, and I'll also take note. Let's go ahead and move on to the middle section with the arpeggiated 16th and see how this motion will help um, achieve the legato. So I'm going to move against the bow first. the bow. Let's now try that same section but move with the bow. Okay, so do you notice differences in the colors or the sounds? And is there one version that fits the opening better than this section? or vice versa. So just take note of how this helps uh, bring more awareness to the shoulder blade and create more legato in your sound and experiment with how you can change during the whole caprice to bring out different things. So thank you.